Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, um, apologies in advance. I appear to have prepared a lecture that hasn't got a single definition and a single theorem in it at all, <laughs> okay? It's just a string of examples. But there's one lecture left tomorrow, so I'll try and define what I'm doing today tomorrow, okay? So I want to just begin by recalling the Hori Waffer construction. So what do we have? We have um, some x contained in a toric variety f, and this is um, a complete intersection. And this is given um, by a bunch of, I want them to be nef fine bundles. Okay, and then there's some additional assumptions. So we assume that there's a partition of R. R, I guess, is the number of rays of F. So we assume that there exists a partition of E and then S1 to SC and then U of R. Okay. So R is, is that what you called it? Yeah. Okay. I call it M. Okay. So I don't know if before you was introduced um, U, though, is just a place to put the, um, to turn it into a partition as opposed to just disjoint subsets, okay? So for obvious reasons, I'm going to call U the uneliminated variables. Okay. And then this partition has to satisfy the following, so such that... So the first one is, I want E to define a basis on L dual. So I want um, J for J and E a basis of L dual. Then the second one, I want each of these line bundles to... Um, to be written as a positive collection of these dj in my basis. So I want each li to be in the cone spanned by E, generated by E. Okay. Then the third condition well, I just want the SI to actually define the LI. So I want each LI is just equal to the sum of DK for K in SI. Okay. So given this data, we can define the mirror. So... For each of these S, I, okay. I'm going to pick a distinguished element. Okay. This is really no big deal. Basically, this picture is an affine picture, and so this is basically just choosing an origin. So just think, pick an origin. Okay. And I'm just going to write SI interior 
or circle, whatever, however you want me to pronounce this, I'm going to pronounce it interior, to be SI subtract this distinguished element. Okay. Just a little bit of notation of shorthand. And we want to write D as a matrix. So it's going to be an M minus D times M matrix. And let's just call it DJI. Okay. And this is written in terms of the um, basis on Z to the M, I guess dual at this point, and the choice of basis we've made on Elster. Then the next step is we just introduce loads of variables. <laughs> variables for everything in sight. So introduce the following collections of variables. So variables. Um, one x1 to xm. And I also want variables yj where these j's are in the SI interiors. Okay, and now define some relations between them. So uh, define relations so I want to say xk is going to be the same thing as 1 over 1 plus yj. This is for all j in si interior. And that's... No. It's si. So this is if k is equal to my choice of distinguished element. So if k is equal to little And I'm going to define it to be yk over 1 plus yj. If um, k is in si interior, otherwise, you know, no relation coming from this. And also, a bunch of products. So I want xk djk equal to 1. And this is from k equals 1 to m. And this is for all j equals 1 to minus d. All right, so basically this is what Alessio told us before when he introduced the Horvath of construction. And the mirror F of D of um, X is just given by um, eliminating these variables from the sum of the X's. So by uh, rewriting... W is equal to x1 plus dot 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 plus xm in terms of these variables that have survived. So let's have a look. So what's survived? Um, we have the x's that are in my uneliminated variables. And then I'm also left with 
my x's corresponding to my distinguished elements. How many of them are there? I've lost track. C, of course, called I mentioned. And I'm also left with my y's, where my y's are in my s interiors. So these are the variables that I rewrite W in. And then I just need to subtract off the constant term. So everything today is basically going to be done up to constant term. Just say and subtract off. Yeses. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, because they're sort of being sent to the origin, as it were, so they're just sort of corresponding to ones. And not, you know, to me, the horographer construction is still slightly mysterious. <laughs> okay, but. All right. So, I mean, I actually did do an example of this before. I think it was the um, cubic surface. But I'm going to do a slightly different example. So, I'm going to make DP6. So I'm going to start with um, my type variety P1 cross P1 cross P1. Okay. And this has um, divisor data, weight data, just given by 1, 1. One, 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 and six devices. D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. I'm going to pick my line bundle, so I'm going to pick just a single one to be one 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 well so now the next step is I need to choose a basis inside L dual the obvious choice of basis I'm going to just pick is D1 D3 D5 okay so pick a basis I mean, it's kind of implicit that choice in the way I've written my matrix, but yeah. So, i.e., I have E is equal to 1, 3, 5. Okay. And now I'm going to choose a way of writing L. I'm going to write it as D2, D4, D6. So, I have S is going to equal 2, 4, 6. And U. But well, there's nothing left, so you is just the empty set. And you know, what the heck I need to choose a distinguished point in here, so I'm gonna choose little less is equal to two.
All right. What are the variables we have? Well, x1 to x6. And then we have y4. And we have y6. Okay. And we have relations. See, we have... We have x2 equal to 1 over 1 plus y4 plus y6. We have x4 equal to y4 over 1 plus y4 plus y6. And we have x6 equal to y6 over 1 plus y4 plus y6, and we just look at these rows of the weight matrix to get products equal to 1. So we see from the first row that x1, x2 is 1, the second row x3, x4 is 1, and then the final row x5. So we have W is just X1 plus, plus X6, okay? And so this is equal to, and just going to do this a little bit slowly because there's an intermediate step that's actually useful to have. So, you know, X1 is just 1 over X2. And X3 is just 1 over X4. And X which one? Um, 5 is just 1 over x6. And then this is going to leave me with x2. Four, six. And then, just rewriting this in terms of y, I'm going to get the obvious thing. Very pedantic to write that over one. And then by construction, this is equal to one. Let me just, um, you know, label this with a star. So anyway, this gives me um, writing oh, x equal to y4, y equal to y6. We recover our Laurent polynomial, f. x plus x over y, etc., etc. I just subtracted off the constant term, which in this case is 4. And if we just set p equal to the Newton polytope of this, um, I get something that looks like this. Is the origin. Lattice. Taking the spanning fan. Like this. 
question. Yeah. Uh, recognize this. Looking at this um, star, I mean, I can forget the constant term here because it's not going to matter. I can say today we're going to be very loose with our constant terms. But I've got these three got distinct expressions. So let me just call them A, B, and C. It's not two, is it? It's four. Yeah. And nothing stops me just drawing their Newton polytopes, too. And I'm going to draw their Newton polytopes on the Newton polytope of P. So we have... A is this one. Um, remember, x is y4, y is y6. So we have x is, A is this one, and B is this one, and C, no, <laughs> now on C. And B is this one. Okay. So, I mean, you can see that these three Newton polytopes have arisen in a natural way through the construction because they arose in the mirror. And they also look a lot like they've got an out, a lot to do with the resulting polytope. You know, they fill it out and give it its shape. So we're going to give them some names. Okay. And this terminology is perhaps not the best, and it might not be stable. But we're going to call those three things three struts. And we're going to collect, call the collection of those three things a scaffolding because it sort of holds P up. Okay? So we'll call A, B, and C struts. Or rather, I mean the Newton polytopes of A, B, and C. And a collection of struts. Is a scaffolding. Of P. You know, we could happily do all of this without these names, but I'm going to call them this whether I define it or not, so I might as well get it out of the way. <laughs> all right. So this is our game. Our game is to invert this process. I want to start with a polytope, and I want to see if there's a way of putting a scaffolding on it so that I end up with a Laurent polynomial. And I want to do this in such a way that it gives me the correct Laurent polynomial. <laughs> okay? It'll give me a toric complete intersection description 
of my um, variety. Now because we're starting with P, and we really don't know much else about P, it really is just a sort of combinatorial game. And um, you know, if I'd <laughs> started writing my lecture a little earlier, I might have got to the point where I could have given you a sort of definition that made sense. But for now, we're just going to do a series of examples, and at the end of this, pretend that we can extract what the correct definition is. Okay. I mean, maybe we don't even know what the correct definition is. So example. I'm going to do the cubic surface backwards. Okay, so I'm going to start with P. This is in N, and it's there. So I want to somehow see that this is the cubic surface. Well, I'm going to give it a strut. Or um, a scaffolding. Now, there's a very obvious choice of scaffolding on this, which is just the triangle itself. So, a single strut. That looks good enough. So I'm not going to draw the lattice again. So we have a single strut. Okay, so we have, um, so how can I turn this into something like a Laurent polynomial? Well, this is, if I just choose x and y to be that, this is just 1 plus x plus y to the 3, and then translate it down to there, so x over y. Okay. And now I need to sort of inverse this process, so I'm going to define... Um, x2 to be 1 over 1 plus x plus y. And I'm going to define x3 to be x over 1 plus x plus y. And I'm going to define x4 to be y over 1 plus x plus y. And I'm going to be slightly slapdash about my constant term. And I'm going to get this is equal to 1 over um, good question. Oh, x2, x3, x4. Okay. And um, now I'm just going to simply add on x2, x3, and x4 because I'm trying to recover w through this process. So... So I'm still going to use an equal sign. But I'll try and um, at least make a token effort to note that it's not really equals. And so this is going to tell me that I should set x1. just be this product. Okay? And this is going to give me the complete intersection data. Well, I've got D1, D2, D3, and D4. And then I've got my single line bundle, and it's going to be 1, 1, 1. Um, yeah, sorry. 
Yes. And then how do I figure out what L is? It's just the sum. So I just to sum those to give me. All right. So I mean, you know, I've just inverted the process. So we have x three d. And okay, maybe to make it really concrete, I have e is equal to one. S is equal to two, three, four, and no one eliminated variables. All right. So I'm going to just put a little dotted line here. And this is just going to be a notational device. What we're going to do is, you know, when we choose our E, we're choosing a basis for L dual. And so I'm always just going to rig it up so that my basis is on this side of the dotted line. And so I'm always just going to know I can write an identity matrix here whose size is just equal to the rank of the variety. Just going to do it as a little placeholder, OK? All right. But also knowing that, I can read off um, the binomial that describes, um, well, actually, no, too soon, too soon. So um, we have um, L is just equal to D2 plus D3 plus D4, okay? And we have F, that I said, is P3. And so I know what the rays of F are. So I could just take the kernel of this. So I have um, the fan of F has rays, obviously up to a choice of basis, but it's got rays row 1, row 2, row 3, and row 4. And well, I'm just going to do E1, E2, E3, and minus E1, minus E2, minus E3. And these are in N R which is three-dimensional. Okay. And if you remember from the adjunction formula, what we need to look at is um, minus kf minus l. So this is just equal to, so always because it's toric variety, um, Minus k, you just sum the di's and take the negation of it. So it's minus the sum of the di's. And then minus l, what was l? I've forgotten, d2, d3, d4. Okay, so I'm just left with minus d1. Okay. And I can turn this into a um, polytope in the dual lattice, m. That's where you can draw divisors. So we have so I'm just going to call it um, Q of minus D1. So this is just going to be defined, just take this as the definition for all cases, because it is. <laughs> Just need to choose all those. Yeah. 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 Good. Yes. What am I going to take? I'm going to take um, row. Uh, what U is here? Okay. I'm going to take U of row one is greater than or equal to minus one. And because I got exactly one d1, and then I'm going to take u of rho j. It's going to be greater or equal to zero, and this is for j equals two, three, and four.
If you work it out, this is a polytope with the following vertices. L was defined by using D2, D3, D4. So that defines what the binomial is that gives us X in P3. So X um, is given by the binomial. Ah, I'm going to have to choose some variables, aren't I? I can't use X's. Um, I can't use Y's. Um, <laughs> what do you call them? I can't use capital X's. <laughs> um, what do you call them? Z's. Okay, so I'm just going to assign some variables to P3. Okay? And then the binomial is going to be given by... Um, Z1 to the 3 minus Z2, Z3, Z4. What I can do is I can quotient M by the corresponding vector 1, 1, 1. I get Q dashed is going to be equal to the convex hull of Q1, 1, 2, and not, not. This is now inside M prime dimensional. Okay. So I can at least draw a picture without too much fuss. Looks like this. And remember this is in M. So I need to, to recover the fan XP. I need to take the normal fan, and you know the normal fan is going to look something like that. So up to a sign issue, which probably I should have just done all of these as less than or equal to. So up to a sign issue, <laughs> we um, the normal fan of um, Q prime um, recovers the spanning fan All right, let's do another example. So, go into this in much less detail. Let's just start with what I happen to know is DP6, again. So I want to construct, I guess most of you know, there's two ways of describing DP6 as a complete intersection, and I'm going to construct the other way. So I'm going to start with this in 
and ah. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a scaffolding. And I'm gonna use two struts. trying to do the scaffolding in yellow. So the scaffolding in this case, um, I think when I draw it, you'll see, I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to call this one A. Call this one B. Okay. So notice that square is just equal to the Minkowski sum of a line plus a line. And this information tells me that what I'm going to get is cut out by two line bundles rather than one line bundle. And so we're going to have... So strut A is just going to give me 1 plus x, 1 plus y, over x, and then strut b is going to be over y. Okay? And then up to um, constant term, I'm going to write this as 1 over, so x1, x2, I'm going to write this as 1 over x3, x4, x5 plus 1 over x3 x6 and then plus x4 plus oops, x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6 and then what have I done? Well, I've done the obvious thing. So x3 is 1 over 1 plus x and x4 is x over 1 plus x. And together, this is going to define one of my line bundles. And then x5 is 1 over 1 plus y. x6 is y over 1 plus y. And this is going to define a second. And then the relation that gives me x1 and x2. I just read off the denominators. And so we have x1, x4, x5 is equal to 1. And x2, x3, x6. So a. Okay. So we cover the complete intersection data. This time we've got six divisors. I've got two divisors. And by construction, D1 and D2 give me the basis for L dual. And then I just read these off the denominators. So I've got a 0, 1, 1, 0. Oops. 1, 0, 0, 1. And then L1 is going to be those two. And L2. So oh, again here, sorry, I should have pointed out this is up to constant term. Let's try and answer a question using this construction that's been hanging over us from a few lectures ago. So if you remember, we started with the cone over the hexagon, and there were two distinct mutations. And one of them gave us P1 cross P1 cross P1, and the other one gave us we don't know. So we'll use this struct method to find out what the other one is. So, example. We had... 
that yes. Communicated to let me draw it carefully. Okay, so it was a square here, and then these that gave us a square face here, if you remember. So it looked. Just to label these, this was the origin, this was Z, and then I think I had one zero zero, zero one zero, and this will be zero minus one zero, this will be one zero zero, and this will be minus one minus one minus one. This was in. So I need to put a strut on it, a scaffolding on it. And um, actually, you'll find that there's only one way you can do this. Okay? You'll think that you see one way, and you'll discover that you can't really do it. There is, in fact, only one way to do it. And it's not what I just drew. And it's given by taking this and this. So let's call this one A. Or this one B. And then this time I'm going to use the unilluminated variables. So I've not been using those before. So I'm going to make this one and this one unilluminated variables. So we've scaffolded with two struts and two unilluminated. Variables. So slight wrinkle. And I'm going to not choose the obvious basis for n. So for a basis, I'm going to use the following. So I'm going to use, well, 1, 0, 0. So far, OK. 0, 1, 0. And um, then 0, 1, 1. And when I write down my Laurent polynomials, this one's going to be x, this one's going to be y, and this one's going to be z. Now let me try and write down my scaffolding. So I have, um, okay, so a is going to give me 1 plus z. Um, divided by xz, and b is going to give me 1 plus z divided by y. Then I have my two unilluminated variables, which are just x and y. So there. Same trick as always. So now I'm just going to write this as, um, let me think. Um, so it's just going to be one line bundle. So I'm going to write one line bundle rank two. Okay, so I'm going to write one over x4 x5, 1 over x3, x6, and then x3, x4, plus x6. So this is up to constant term. <laughs> well,
x3 is just going to be 1 over 1 plus z. x4 is just going to be z over 1 plus z. And together, he's going to define L. And then x5 is just going to be x. x6 is just going to be y. And we have x1, x4, x5, equal to x2, x3, x6 is equal to 1. So we get the divisor data A, B, uh, 1, D, 2. And here it's going to be an identity. What do we get? We get 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then L, this time only comes from D3 and D4. So I'm going to get 1, 1. So I've got um, 1, 1 divisor in... Um, P cross P2. Good. So, you know, this, um, I mean, basically, this answers the question that we were wondering before. How can we figure out what that um, variety was? And so, there's just time I'm going to do a final example, and then I say, um, Next lecture at the very beginning, I'm just going to try and give a formal definition for struts and then see if Alessio has anything he wants to say. <laughs> okay. So, final example. So, do you remember we had those third one one um, surfaces? And the question was, you know, okay, very good, we've got polytopes, but what are they as varieties? You know, how are we going to understand this? And um, we just do the same thing. So, I'm going to take one of the examples. First one on the list, which just looks like oh, looks like this, and I think it had the origin here. Okay, and my scaffolding that I'm going to use again. There's only one choice I can make. I mean, it's completely uniquely defined. I'm going to have to choose this strut here. And I'm going to have to choose this as an uneliminated variable. So we have scaffolding with one strut. And um, one uneliminated variable. So the basis I'm going to use is I'm just going to use this and this as my basis directions. So I'm going to use 1, 1 and 0, 1. And this one I'll just associate with x. This one I'll just associate with y. And I'm going to get 1 plus y to the 4 over x, y, plus x. So this here is a, and this here is my uneliminated variable. And then, just doing the same trick, so it's going to be just rank 1, so this is going to be 1 over So it's going to be x2 to the 3, x4, x5, plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x... Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I mysteriously skipped a number. 
good. X2 to the 3 plus X3 plus X4, X2, X3, X4, good. So up to constant term. And then this is where X2 is just 1 over 1 plus Y. X3 is Y over 1 plus Y. And together this defines my divisor L, or my bundle L. And then X4 is equal to X. And we have the relation... So we have the relation x1, um, x2 cubed, x3, x4. So finally, just write out the divisor data. D1 is going to be my basis, D2, D3, D4, and it's going to be 1, 3, 1, 1, and then L is just coming from D2, so it's going to be 4. So what I have is X4 and 1, 1. So that is what that sort variety defaults to. Okay, so I'm definitely going to stop there. Like I said, it consisted of no definitions and no uh, theorems. Any questions?